dismissed. And the first reaction of all people around me, except of the commissioner, was this is a total nonsense, never do it, too high political risk, nobody is going to take this risk, so forget about that. And the commissioner said, like, oh, why not? Just think about that. And you can come with a proposal. And at the very same day, I met Jochen Flasbart, who was that, that time general director for biodiversity here in Germany. And he was asking exactly the same question. So I said, you would not believe, but we just discussed it with our commissioner. And I think we should think about that. And then we put in the commission in our planning, something like that. We started with European mechanism. We were thinking about something like IPCC panel, but uh, uh, in the biodiversity, etc. And for more than a year, it was just going to many people and trying to, to, to convince them that something like that makes sense. And everyone was telling that it is nonsense. And then it came, and I think that was the, the, the deciding moment when the German Minister of Environment, Mr. Gabriel, put it on the agenda of the Potsdam meeting of G8 and proposed study like that, uh, and it was accepted. And it was a phone call from Germany about three weeks before the Potsdam meeting asking our commissioner if we are prepared to support it. And commissioner said, oh yes, we are already discussing about that about a year. <laughs> so uh, actually, by coincidence, uh, the, the initiative of the German minister came in the time when the commission was prepared to do it, and I think that was the, that was the start of the process. It's true that for a long time we didn't call it TIB. TIB is actually the name which was invented by Pavan. Um, I don't know if you know that, because originally we didn't have any name. And we had didn't a lot of interesting proposals <laughs> like rebel and oh yes 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 uh, I, I have somewhere the the, the 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 list of the acronyms uh, but I also have a list of the people which we tried to convince to take the responsibility to lead the study it was many people many phone calls at a very high political level and it was really exactly as I said before everyone oh you know very exciting very interesting proposal but you know I have other uh, commitments, I don't have time, I cannot take this risk, etc., etc., for a long time. And again it was, I mean, I, I have to admit, again it was Germany, and again it was Jochen Flasbach coming back and saying, did you hear ever about the Pavan Sukdev? And, and we said, okay, uh, no, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> and then we, we have first meeting, and, and we found Pavan as, as, a, as a great study leader, and, and, and and he came with a simple acronym. He said, why we don't call it TEEP, like the economics of the biodiversity, ecosystems and biodiversity, it was so obvious. And since then, I think it is now a kind of uh, uh, successful uh, acronym, I would say. Uh, the expectations were very clear to put biodiversity and ecosystem services very high on the political agenda to convince uh, also the economic part of the debate. I have to say that the very beginning in my mind was in the Czech Republic in 1990. We had that time a prime minister who is by coincidence a president of Czech Republic today. And when he met the ecologist at that time, he said, oh, ecology, this I see as a cherry on the cake and we first have to make the wealth in economy and then we can think about the ecosystems. And that was all the time, you know, in my mind. I mean, I, we, we, we all disagreed, but we didn't have a convincing arguments. We didn't have really in hand any numbers, any values, anything what could be used in debate with mainstream economists to show that the biodiversity has also other values and values for economy itself. So I think that was at the very beginning and everyone understood, but the problem was there were many approaches uh, there were many methodologies existing, uh, competing, I would even say, um, criticizing each other. And the problem was which way we go. And I think that one of the big assets of the TV is what you said, that it came together and the people started to discuss what we can take from each and uh, every approach to have something what will be globally accepted. So maybe it was quite long, but. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll, I'll continue with you, Herman. Um, 
maybe you can briefly mention when you came on board the team initiative and what you thought when, when you were asked. But even more, it would interest me now as someone from business and working in the business context for most of your life, what has been the reaction in the business sector and, and how far have we got there and what, what else is needed? Thank you, Heidi. Um, a good idea needs his moment and its leader. And I think it was both Miko in the conception and Pavan in the implementation who were those leaders. That's my first comment. My second comment is, and uh, Simon is going to, uh, to Wall Street uh, the, uh, the day, well, tomorrow, tonight. Uh, tomorrow morning, tomorrow. Um, if you look at the financial crisis, the biggest assets and liabilities are not on the balance sheet. You don't find them there because they don't recognize them. And that's what you will find there also. They don't recognize it until the moment that there is a recognition that something needs to be done. I think that's what the added value has been of TEEP. We are opening our eyes. We have to recognize that we have to price the priceless and we have to value those assets and liabilities which are not being valued. To TEEP or not to TEEP, that's not a question. It's an absolute imperative and as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a banker, and now as an impact investor, it's quite obvious that particular long-term investors have to, look, have to take a long-term view. They have to look beyond what we know today. They have to change their lens, their metrics, and they have to engage. So the financial sector, where I'm coming from, and as a matter of fact, Pavan and I is, is also from the financial sector, we realize that we are not good enough in our risk management and in our opportunity assessment. But that's one, one category which I think is important. I think the, the business community is getting it. There's an there are a number of important initiatives right now uh, in, the, in, the in the business sector to apply the, uh, the principles of TEEP. Puma is one example, but you can also think of uh, companies which take in a different way a similar approach, like, like Unilever. So the business, the large business is getting it. But there's still a world to win with medium sized and smaller businesses, those who are in the supply chain of, of the large businesses. And finally, us, the consumer. We have to realize that we can change and we have to change our behavior also. When we go to the supermarket, we know that we are competing with each other to get the, less, to, to get the product at the lowest price. But that price is not the true price. Not only do we have to make visible what, what Puma does, what the damage is which you impose on nature, and you do it publicly, but also we as consumers should become aware that we are underpricing the products which we eat every day. So the challenge for, for now for, for, for TEEP phase three is to put it into practice that corporations start to recognize they have to change their operations, their investments, and their screens and analysis, analytics. That investors have to look long term. That the consumer should recognize we have to look at the intrinsic value of the products because the way we live, and Simon has presented clearly in his, in his presentation, is not sustainably. And that's the mission. That's the mission, and I think all of you as active members of the, of the deep community whether you're from business or whether you're from, from governments or from NGOs, we have something here which is gold in our hand. We have to work together. Thank you very much. Maybe you could pass it to Jackie. Um, Jackie, you, you, as we again learned in the advisory board meeting earlier today, uh, you are involved in, in many different initiatives and you are aware of many different initiatives. And as the objective of this third phase is really to encourage others to, to work with the TEAM approach. Could you maybe give us a little bit of, of this panorama and of interesting initiatives going on and um, how we as a scientific community and a policy community that is also quite present in this room now can reach out to the rest of the world? Thank you, 